So there's a new article that recently came out from the Financial Times that states that it took nearly eight years to sell the first millionth battery powered car. The two millionth mark took roughly 32 months and the third millionth took approximately 15 months, right? And so the accelerating pace has brought the four millionth sale just after 10 months. And so we are continuing to see a boom in the EV space with the trend going upwards, which is evident when you start looking at the year over year revenue for Tesla. In fact, if you average the last couple of years, Tesla's increasing in revenue by 61% each year, with 2020 being $31 billion in revenue, 2021 being $53 billion in revenue, and 2022 being $81 billion in revenue. Now, a video I did about a week ago, I highlighted how Tesla's gross profits are very similar to legacy automakers like GM's gross profit, even though GM is doing twice as much revenue as Tesla is doing. And this is because Tesla has a much larger profit margin in comparison to a lot of the legacy automakers. In fact, there's a law called Wright's Law, which was pioneered by Theodore Wright in 1936 that basically states that for every doubling of units produced, costs will fall by a consistent percentage. And a good hypothetical example of this is necessarily the idea of buying furniture from Ikea. We've all bought in some sort of furniture from Ikea at some point in our lives, and we've had to build the furniture, right? So let's say you buy a chair from Ikea, right? It's gonna take you some time to build that chair. However, if you were to go back to Ikea after buying and building that same chair, and then buying it again to build it, you're gonna build it at a much faster pace. Thus, it's gonna save you time time which is gonna save you money, right, if you're a business, right? And so if you keep doing this over and over again, it's gonna constantly keep saving you time and eventually as you scale up, you may get more employees who could be able to build more chairs as well. And then later on, maybe those employees might say, hey, we don't even have to buy the products from Ikea or the parts from Ikea. We could just buy le or the raw materials or less expensive uh, you know, materials that are not from Ikea and thus boost our profit margin. So the more that you kind of start building Building a product the more you become more efficient with it and that's basically the premise of Wright's law where the average time per unit kind of steeps downwards as you get deeper into production and so one of the concerns from a lot of investors going forward into the next earnings that's coming out in the next couple of weeks for Tesla is hey you know Tesla was able to beat delivery numbers and that's very good for Tesla they were able to produce more vehicles but the concern is is profit margin going to diminish because of course you know for Tesla to delivered this amount of vehicles in the last quarter, they had to cut the price of their products, right? And that's a very valid point. You know, a lot of the bears argue this, and I 100% agree with that. However, that's a very myopic way of looking at things. For example, we constantly see Wall Street get, you know, Tesla wrong, you know, year over year. And it's because, you know, you have to think of the way that Wall Street looks at things. Wall Street looks at things quarter over quarter, right? And it makes sense because if you're an investor, you wanna you know, put your money into something and you wanna know that quarter over quarter, you're gonna get a return. However, you have to look at things when it comes to Tesla in a 10 year horizon. So as Tesla continues to produce and deliver more vehicles in the EV space, much more than their competitors, well, eventually they're going to be able to figure out how to save on cost at a better rate than what the competitors are doing. And so this is why Tesla still has the major lead in the EV space. Right now the argument is, hey, yeah, Tesla has a major share in the EV you know, market, but what happens when all the legacy automakers start joining? Well, yeah, they could join, but Tesla, because of their lead and having that experience of producing more cars, are going to be able to figure out how to cut costs and you know still have profit margins much more boosted in comparison to the auto legacy companies. Kind of bringing it back to that you know an, an uh, analogy of like IKEA of you know buying that chair and building it over and over and over again. You're going to become much more efficient and figure out how to save costs at a better rate than your competitors. But along with saving costs, Tesla's also going to be able to get better and making the actual product. For example, today I logged on to Twitter and I went ahead and I saw this interesting video that I wanted to share with you guys.
So we see here a race between the Lamborghini and a Plaid and Tesla's honestly holding up very well. Now I know some, you know, individuals who are pessimistic may say, hey, Justin, but you know, this was a short distance race. If it was much longer, the Lamborghini would have won. It would have, you know, obviously taken some time, but in the longer distance race, they would win. But the main, you know, the main fact here is that Tesla is making an amazing product that is holding up well with some of the most, you know, expensive sports cars out there while still being much more affordable and being a car that, you know, a family would most likely use. However, I want to share with you guys something else that I found interesting. So we're currently seeing that there's a new buzzword on the block. In fact, we're seeing that AI is being mentioned in earnings calls from the S&P 500 companies much more than ESG mentions. Now, buzzwords have been mentioned in earnings calls for decades just so that they could pull investors' money uh, into the you know company stock, and we've seen this time over time again. I mean, back before the dot-com burst in the you know early 2000s, we saw companies that you know sold things like pet foods or jeans just mention the word of internet and online just to boost you know the company's uh, stock by having investors pull money in. Only later to find out that you know the company really wasn't worth much saw. However, you know not only can Tesla take advantage of the buzzword of AI. I, they're actually one of the few companies that is actually primed to really excel further because of AI technology. I mean, there's only a few companies when you think about it. I mean, you think about Google, you think about Meta, you think about uh, Tesla, right? I, I mean, there's a few others that I'm, I'm kind of leaving out there, but Tesla's one of the top three, if arguably, companies that could really take advantage of what they're doing because of, you know, obviously AI, but a lot of people also forget to mention what Tesla's also working on in the back scene with robotics. But with that being said, guys, that was just something I found interesting interesting i want to go ahead and take a look at something from the technical side of tesla Alrighty, so we're officially in my laptop typically when i show the charts i just would show a screenshot as i don't put too much weight on technical analysis right i think it's just one data point and it's not really the strongest data point that you could look at however i think that for the purposes of this video it'd be much more effective to kind of make it a little bit more interactive by showing you guys you know just the charts in a more dynamic view right so what did we see with tesla recently right so looking at a five minute view we saw tesla kind of going downwards with the overall market but of course tesla had the news uh, right around this time with mercedes joining the supercharging network which of course course you know it served as a bullish catalyst but we still had tesla end up closing lower for the day now you know it makes sense especially after we've seen tesla run up uh, tremendously i mean just look at this from if, if we kind of just go from let's see the beginning of the year to where we were at the peak that was 160 percent right and just half the year which is why I've, I've, I've covered tesla a lot on this channel i know some individuals are like hey can you talk about google can you talk about nvidia and meta or, you know etc but you know one of the reasons i've covered tesla so often on the channel is because of you know this right but one of the things we have to acknowledge is that you know a stock just does not go up forever in a perfect world it would but in reality there's always going to be you know the ups and downs and so we're most likely going to see a little bit more volatility especially uh you know for the overall market but for tesla as well um especially because next week we have a big week we have a lot of the uh you know speakers from the federal reserve we have some you know who are voting members in the fomc committee uh speaking and they're all gonna kind of spew their thoughts on what's going on with inflation but more importantly you know towards uh i believe the middle of the week we have the cpi report coming out now we want to pay attention to what happens with the cpi report because one of the main concerns is is inflation getting worse right because of course if we have a hot print for the cpi well that would scare you know it would scare the markets a little bit more right as it would cause more panic because we've recently heard you know a lot of hawkish rhetoric coming from members of the fomc right we've heard jerome powell the fed chairman of the federal reserve say hey you know we paused only to really just kind of give ourselves a little bit of time to analyze the data, but it's much more likely that we're gonna have to hike two additional times. So this CPI report is gonna hold a little bit more weight than typical CPI reports as, you know, we really wanna see what's going on with inflation, right? Because we don't wanna see something like what ended up happening in the UK where, <laughs> 
inflation actually sp uh, spiked up even higher, right? Because then that would be a fireball of uh, just crazy emotions and the market would definitely, uh, you know, sell off a lot heavier. So we want to see what goes on with the CPI report. Of course, if we have a soft uh, print for the CPI report and inflation looks like it's taming down, well then, hey, we could possibly see the overall market continue going on its trajectory as it made them, uh, you know, kind of dismiss what the uh, members of the FOMC have been saying, right? They may dismiss some of the hawkish tones that have been coming out from that area, right? But um, we also have to acknowledge some things from a technical standpoint. So one of the things I mentioned in a recent video is, you know, we had this major gap over here, right? Um, and obviously, we know that when there's very little volume, um, you know, we see a lot of movement, right? Because there's not a lot of, uh, you know, there's not a big battle between the bid and the ask, right? And so then you, you see big movements when there's a very little volume by price, right? That's more, that's very important. I mentioned that volume by price, not your traditional volume by time. Now, why did this jump happen? Well, this was a fundamental reason, right? We had the delivery numbers do extremely, well, not extremely well, but they beat Wall Street's expectations by a specific amount. And so we saw Tesla jump up, I believe it was 6%. Now, in a technical world, right, there's something called a gap fill. Now, it's not that every single time you have a gap, a stock has to fill that gap. It's just that very often we do see that play out. Again, there's just psychology in that. I don't put too much weight on, you know, what's going on in the charts, but it is something that we have to pay attention to. It is one data point. And so one of the things I mentioned recently is that, hey, you know, we could possibly see Tesla stock fall down very quickly and fill this gap. Why? Well, of course, next week we have a CPI report. Um, we also have the Fed speakers, and so there's going to be some more concern and panic in the market. Plus, when you look at the volume by price, it's very low, so Tesla just has to dip down a little bit. And you know, from there, if there's still some selling pressure, well, it could fall down pretty fast to back to this area of 264, right? And so that was one of the things I mentioned. And I also mentioned that hey, if Tesla starts, you know, going back to this level. One of the things that's kind of good for us, you know, if you're someone who's bullish on Tesla, right, is that around that 264 level, right, there's much more volume by price. And so when there's higher volume by price, you don't see the rapid movements. Again, you see the big movements when there's little volume by price, but when there's a lot of volume, right, it's much more kind of sideways, right? And we see that. That's why we see, you know, ups and downs, kind of just moving sideways, ups and downs when there's a lot of volume by price. I mean, if we scale out, look at where there's the most volume by price. That's the biggest uh, area where we see a lot of consolidation by Tesla. You look at the areas where there's little volume by price, depending on the price uh, action, the direction, that's where you see the biggest spikes. I mean, look at this candle right over here, this huge green candle followed by another green candle. Where did it fall into the volume profile? Well, it fell in an area where there was little volume by price. So, uh, again, just you know, kind of repeating that. So, uh, we could possibly see Tesla fall down to this area, right? And with Tesla having a lot more volume by price over here, we could possibly see an area of support be established. And so, one of the things I've addressed is that if Tesla does fall down and we do see a support here, we could possibly see more shorts add on to the shorts uh, bets on Tesla, right? And that would cause more selling pressure. But if we do have Tesla actually do well for their earnings and once again beats Wall Street's expectations again, well, that could cause another pop. Very similar to the pop that we saw recently over here. We could see Tesla fall down and then pop back up right around to this high 275 level, right? Now, once we're at this 275 level, then you know we'll have to reevaluate with the, the rest of the data because there's going to be much more economic data coming out, and then we also want to pay attention to what's going on uh, with other companies and their earnings because again, you know, although the market moves on several different data points, you know, if Tesla does well, but then at the same time, you know, uh, every other company is doing worse, well, we could see two things: we could see more money pile into Tesla, and of course, you know, stocks move up and down based on the money that's going into it. Or we could see something where, you know, a lot of market participants are very uh, skeptical of the market and it's a risk off environment where people want to move out and go more into treasuries. Right. And so, you know, there's definitely going to be more data that we're going to want to pay attention to, which is why I always say we want to stay data dependent. We want to see what's going on um, overall. Right. Just from a macro perspective. And so um, for me personally, right, because I, I do trade Tesla in the short term in my short term trading account. 
But I also have Tesla in my long-term portfolio, and I don't plan on selling Tesla um, at all. Even if Tesla comes falling down, you know, that's just uh, an opportunity for me to buy Tesla. You know, for if you guys have been following the channel, I know it sounds repetitive, but for this whole time, I, I kept saying, man, you know, I want to add more shares of Tesla to my long-term portfolio, but it's kind of hard when Tesla just keeps going up because I obviously want to add more when Tesla's down, right? You want to buy you know, low and sell high, right? Very basic, right? Warren Buffett says, and I say this quote almost every video, but he says, you know, be fearful when everyone's greedy, meaning why am I going to buy when it's going up, everyone's greedy, and be greedy when everyone's fearful. You want to buy when everyone's kind of concerned, right? And so I have a bullish, optimistic look on Tesla for the long term because now, I mean, we're not even counting what they're doing ro with robotics, but what, what they're doing with just their car volume, right? With them being able to deliver and produce much more vehicles than a lot of the auto legacy companies and we see the trend of ev growing as i mentioned in the beginning of the video well to me that just is making it prime for uh, tesla to succeed and do well right and there's so many other factors i mean um we could even apply uh the the idea of they're going to be able to generate more revenue from energy eventually right so that's another thing that you know they're ahead of the curve as well and so, like I said, I'm very bullish for Tesla in the long term. Even if Tesla falls down in the short term, well, hey, that may be an opportunity to buy more. Um, as far as trading, you know, I, I do, you know, trade day to day. We'll have to see what goes on. Some days I don't even participate in the market. Um, but one of the things I do want to mention is that you should never just trade or invest based on anyone else's uh, opinion or view on the market, and that includes myself. I don't want anyone to just buy or uh, in invest or trade based on what my thoughts are on Tesla, only if you see value in it, right? Like if you see value on what I'm saying, you're doing your due diligence as well, and you agree, then all the power to you. But if you're just, you know, kind of buying on based on what anyone else says, well, you don't want to do that, right? It's kind of like copying from someone's tests in school, right? If you copy and they have the answers wrong, where well, you're going to get the answers wrong as well. Um, so with that being said, guys, I don't want to make this video very long. I want to keep it very short and concise. Um, but I just wanted to highlight some concerns with Tesla possibly seeing some volatility going into next week. But hopefully this video serves some utility for you guys. Hopefully you guys like and subscribe. And before you guys go, make sure to watch this next video right over here. And I'll see you guys on that next video. Take care.